Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. We certainly do thank and praise the Lord for his greatness and his mercy that he has shown toward us. The Lord is good and his mercy once again endureth forever. And I can truly say I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. And as the Bible says, we ought to enter in his gates with thanksgiving and enter in his courts with praise. And it's good uh, to be alive, amen. It's good to be alive. It's good to also have that mind to come to the household of the Lord. Not a lot, a lot of people have that kind of mind. But if you've got that mind, consider yourself blessed. Amen. I remember some years ago, and I was talking uh, to Bishop Radcliffe, and I was telling him I had a mind to pray. And it kind of struck me because... He said, man, you are blessed. And just the way he said that <laughs> let me to know that that's something valuable. Yes, when you got a mind to pray, a mind to seek God, uh, that's something valuable. Yes, that's something noteworthy because not everyone has that mind. Not everyone has that spirit. Not everyone has that desire. Uh, as the scripture says, as the deer panted after the water brook, so panted my soul after thee, O God. Yes. Amen. In our hearts and our minds, we ought to pan after the, the, the Lord. So we want to go before the Lord in prayer. And as we get ready to go before the Lord in prayer, we certainly want to remember those that are bereaving, those that are going through in their mind and in their body. Uh, also remember those that uh, have lost loved ones, even in this time and day um, that the, the spirit of comfort will come upon uh, men and women and children everywhere that the Lord himself will continue to save and add to the church daily such as should be saved. Amen. And let us pray uh, for the churches worldwide and let us pray that the Lord will continue to, to bless us uh, in all aspects uh, physically, spiritually financially Amen. And even emotionally, that the Lord will take care of all of our needs, just as he has promised. Amen. And one thing that we do know about the Lord, that he is a promise keeper, and that he can also do exceedingly and abundantly. Amen. Above all that we're able to ask or think. Amen. Uh, any other prayer requests? Yes, let us remember the Bean family. Bishop Jones and Sister Floretta and Sister Priscilla, that the Lord will bless. And uh, remember Christian ministries as a whole. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. David, amen, and uh, Brother, B, Brother Grady, Minister Grady, and uh, Sister Tanya, amen. Remember all of our children as well. Thank you, Lord, because, you know, when you're uh, striving uh, to walk with God, uh, the enemy, if he can't get to you, he'll try to get to your family. He'll try to get to your children. He'll try to get to those that you're close to to get you discouraged, amen. So let us pray. Uh, as we have stated, uh, for each one of them, and each and every one of us, amen, that God's most perfect will will be done. Thank you, Lord. I'm, I'm glad to uh, not only be able to call, but know who to call. Amen. amen. It's good for us to know who to call. Amen. Call on the name of the Lord. So let us stand. Thank you, Jesus. And let it be hard for you. Oh, gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, as we come before you, Lord, we certainly do say thank you and praise you for your greatness and your mercy, your love and your kindness. Lord, you told us to seek. You told us to knock. You told us to ask, uh, to make our petition known unto you. And Lord, we bring our petition unto you, Lord. Hallelujah. With full confidence and boldness of faith. Hallelujah. That you hear our humble cry. Lord, you said in your word, blessed are the meek. Hallelujah. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. 
And Lord, we're crying out to you, Lord, in our spirit. We're crying out to you in our soul and our body. Lord, we ask you, Lord, that you bless each and every request that's been made known, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, you search our hearts and search our minds, Lord. See the necessity, see the seriousness of our humble cry. Hallelujah, Lord, we are powerless without you. In hey, glory, Lord, we need your help. Hallelujah, we cast our cares upon you. Send out your hand. Take a whole shot. Lord, make ways where it seems to be no way. Hear our humble cry, Lord. We ask you, Lord, that you bless each and every request. Hallelujah, each and every request that's been made known. And Lord, we ask you, Lord, to move by your grace and move by your power. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask you to bless our Bible study on today. Yeah, glory. Hallelujah. Send us a word. Send us your anointing. Send us your grace and your strength. Uh, grant us the door of utterance, Lord, and ears to hear. Hallelujah to the saving of our soul. Father, we thank you. Mm, we give you glory and honor in the precious and the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Ghost, teach us tonight. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Let us just give the Lord a praise. My God, I know that he has heard us. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. It's good for us to praise the Lord. Amen. The Bible tells us that we're commanded to praise the Lord. Uh, I want to, uh, you to turn with me tonight. Uh, I want to start out with a foundational scripture out of the book of St. Luke, St. Luke chapter uh, 17, St. Luke chapter 17, and I'm going to specifically go to uh, verses 20 and 21, but uh, the Bible study tonight is dealing with uh, kingdom principles. I want to talk tonight about kingdom principles because it's imperative it's imperative that we know about the kingdom of God. And uh, to help us, to help us, um, there are three, uh, in my mind, this is how I'm putting it, uh, there are three aspects of God's kingdom uh, that we ought to be mindful of. And we know that a kingdom represents the rule of God, where God rules and where he reigns. Amen. And there's uh, three dominant terms uh, in use of the kingdom, and the three really mean the same thing, but I'm going to break them out to mean uh, something different. I'm not changing the word of God, but uh, just as an acronym for myself and for you all uh, so that we can uh, study this word together. And those, and as you know in the scriptures, it talks about the kingdom of God, and then it talks about the kingdom of heaven, and then it talks about the kingdom, amen. And uh, essentially, once I said, they, they essentially mean the same thing, but uh, for, my, for my Bible study and for our teaching and for our learning and admonition, I'm going to uh, attach an assignment to each three, and, and uh, lack of a better word, um, kind of give it three different aspects. Amen? Thank you, Lord. I'm, I'm not changing the word. <laughs> I want to make that clear. I won't go to hell. <laughs> Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Amen. But when we're looking at uh, God's kingdom, when I'm speaking of uh, the kingdom of God, I want you to write this down as you're studying and as you're out there the kingdom of God. Uh, I'm going to talk to that aspect as being the character of God. The kingdom of God representing God's character. And uh, the kingdom of heaven, I want to use that as uh, God's government, the government of God, where God rules, where he reigns. And uh, the kingdom of and just kingdom, the word kingdom, I want to use that as God's culture, the way God does things, 
God's culture, the way that God does things. So, uh, next three Bible classes, this one or the next two rather, will deal with the character of God, God's character. And we'll also deal with the, the following Bible study, the Lord say the same, we'll deal with his government, God's rule. And the last uh, series in this, this particular study that we're doing, we're going to deal with God's culture, God's culture, the culture of God. It deals with the way God does things. When you look at a culture, it deals with how people get things done. Every, every aspect of life has a culture. You even have a, a culture in your own home. There's a way that you get things done. And everybody does things differently in their home. Amen. And your home is your dominion. Your home is where you rule. Amen. And God has a way uh, of getting things done in his culture. Amen. And if we're going to be a part of God's kingdom, we have to operate in God's culture, the way he gets things done. And then we have to understand his, his laws and his, his rule. And then we have to understand God's character. Amen. Who he is. So um, in looking at our, our study, our one of our base foundational scriptures, uh, we're coming out of the book of St. Luke. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost already. Thank you. Uh, the book of St. Luke, uh, chapter 17, and uh, verse number 20. Uh, St. Luke 17 and verse number 20. And it says, uh, and when he was demanded of the Pharisees, and he's talking about Jesus. They were demanding of Jesus. Uh, when the kingdom of God should come. They asked him when the kingdom of God should come. He answered and said, The kingdom of God cometh not with observation. Meaning that you can't see it. It's coming without observation. You can't see it with your naked or uh, eye. Amen. Hallelujah. And he says, verse 17, neither shall they say, lo, here, neither shall they say, lo, here, lo, there, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Amen. God's kingdom is within you. So we want to say and want to establish what that means, that that, that, that once you are born again of the water and of the spirit, remember when Jesus was talking to Nicodemus in St. John chapter number three and verse number one, G Nicodemus came to Jesus by night and, and was asking him questions. And Jesus uh, turned and said, to except you be born again of the water and of the spirit, you cannot see the kingdom of God. What Jesus was saying then is that you have to be born of the water and of the spirit to be able to enter into God's kingdom, into the kingdom of God. And uh, that being born again deals with regeneration. Notice the water. Uh, the water represents our uh, new birth, uh, being baptized in the name of Jesus and and the spirit represents being filled with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. And when we acknowledge Jesus as our Lord and Savior, the Holy Ghost transitions us into the kingdom of heaven. And once we get born again, once we get saved and accept Jesus as our Lord and our Savior, then we have literally entered into the kingdom of God. And when you're into the kingdom of God, oftentimes there's, a, there's, there's some confusion by the new believer because, you know, now things have changed. Uh, you can't do the things you want to do and still be at peace with God. And you have to learn now uh, what uh, the do's and the don'ts are. You got to learn what you have. Amen. 
Thank you, Lord. My God, uh, when, when, you, when, when you get a new car, when you get a, a, a new washing machine or a dryer, when you get a new refrigerator, everything comes with a manual. Amen. It comes with a manual which was written by the manufacturer. And it tells you about the object which you have purchased. Amen. And, and same way with God. God gives us his holy word, his Bible. Amen. To, to give us a great understanding of what we have literally entered into. Amen. And you've got to, if you're going to manifest God's kingdom within you, you've got to know what you've got. Amen. You've got to know how to operate. You got to know that you got to walk by faith and not by sight. And you got to know when you are attacked by the enemy, what you have to do, hallelujah, in order to push up that enemy off off you so you can carry on the work and the will of God. You got to know where to go get your help. Hey, glory. Uh, hey, glory. Hallelujah. You got to know where your help comes from. Amen. Hallelujah. And the word of God, it tells us these things and it helps us to understand these things. Amen. Hallelujah. Because he said, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. That word new creature means new creation. Amen. New design. Hallelujah. That, that, that you are new through and through. Uh, that's why the scripture says, let this mind be in you which is also in Christ Jesus. And that's why he says, uh, he tells us in uh, Romans chapter number 12 and verse number one, I beseech ye therefore, brethren, uh, uh, by the mercies of God, that you present your body as a living sacrifice. Notice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And he says, be not cut for him. Amen. Don't be conformed to this world anymore, but be transformed by what? The renewing of your mind. Your mind has to be renewed. Your, your thoughts have to be renewed. Your, your way of living has to be renewed. Your, your way of thinking has to be renewed. That, that old man has to be put to death and that new man has to come alive. Hallelujah, my God. And that's through Christ Jesus. My God, and, and the Word of God, and the Word of God. Amen? Hallelujah. Yeah. Uh, come on, just give God a praise. I feel a praise on the inside. Hallelujah. Uh, I feel some strength. Hallelujah. Uh, on the inside. My God, I feel the kingdom coming. Hallelujah. <laughs> uh, on the inside. My God. Hey, come on, shout. Hallelujah. Uh, because there's healing in the kingdom, there's deliverance in the kingdom. Uh, there's power in the kingdom. Uh, there's strength in the kingdom. Hallelujah. There's help in the kingdom. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And the kingdom, see, that's why we're feeling it up in here, because it's within us. Amen. It was within us. Thank you, Lord. Like, like, like when uh, Elizabeth uh, and Mary got together and, 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 and the babe leaped in her womb. Hallelujah. Because of the salutation. Why? Because the kingdom was coming. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Something got to move. Hallelujah. Something got to move. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Something got to move. Yeah, glory, hallelujah, because there's power, hallelujah, there's deliverance, thank you, Lord, there's strength, hallelujah, and there's glory, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, something got to move, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, and, and, and just go with me, just real quick over to uh, Romans uh, chapter uh, 14, thank you, Jesus, before we... Uh, get seriously into our Bible study on today because Jesus said it comes without observation and lo the kingdom of God is within you amen is within you and then Romans chapter uh, 14 thank you Romans chapter 14 and uh, verse number 17 notice what it says it says, for the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. So it's not something that's tangible. 
Amen. It's not something that's tangible. That's what he's trying to say when, he's, when he says it's not meat and drink. It's not something tangible. But notice, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. And uh, what that is really saying is, is that uh, God's kingdom is established through principles. Amen. It's established through principles, through doctrine, through teaching, through the word of the Lord. Amen. As we were uh, earlier, I was quoting scriptures uh, unto you. Uh, I was quoting the word of the Lord unto you. And, and as we were quoting that word, the atmosphere changed. Uh, you, you felt it in your spirit. You felt it in your soul. That was, that was, that was the kingdom of heaven uh, within you being activated by the word. Uh, the kingdom of heaven is established in you through the word of God. That's why it says it's without observation because you can't see the word within you, uh, but if you live it, they'll be able to see it. Amen. If you walk it by faith, they'll be able to see it. That's what Jesus re referred to uh, uh, Nicodemus when he said, the spirit of God is like the wind. Uh, you, can't, you don't know whether it's coming or whether it's going, but you see the effects of it. Uh, and when you are operating in the kingdom of heaven, people may not see you, people may not understand you, but they'll know that you've been there by the effects that you have, hallelujah, but in that atmosphere, amen, by, by you operating in the word of God, amen. So notice what he said, he said, for the kingdom is not meat and drink, but righteousness, amen, uh, you have to be able to uh, be righteous, amen. And righteousness is 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 really the 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 the, the uh, how can I say it? the the uh, uh, culture of God, amen. That's God's culture, the 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 way to do things, amen. We're gonna get deeper into it. I'm just laying the groundwork right now. The when you think of righteousness. You should think of right behavior. And when you think of a culture, a culture is a way of doing things. And God wants you to do things righteously. Amen. Right. Amen. Hallelujah. And do it through right behavior. And notice he talks about peace. Uh, and, and peace is an establishment of God's government, God's rule, because God's government, his rule, it is to establish peace. Amen? And in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost represents the, the, the character of God. The Holy Ghost represents the character of God. Amen? Hallelujah. Now, um, uh, I want you to turn with me uh, because I want to, the reason why I'm showing you these scriptures because I want to establish this with you so that you'll be able to study this yourself because what we're, what we're going to embark on in these next uh, three weeks, it, it can be life-changing if we apply it to ourselves. Amen? Thank you. I feel like, I feel like uh, uh, one, of the, uh, uh, one of the apostles, I uh, forget which one of them was, uh, uh, in the book of John it describes it, uh, Lord have mercy, but uh, one of the uh, disciples found Jesus, and then he took him to Peter, and he said, I have found him whom we have, we've, been, we've been looking for. Amen. I have found the Messiah. Thank you, Lord. And, and the, word, the word of the Lord that is coming unto me, if we apply it, I have found it. Amen. That will truly help us Hallelujah. to go to ascend to that next level. Hallelujah. Come on, just give God a praise. Thank you, Jesus. So turn with me, then. Uh, let us go to the beginning. Uh, the book of Exodus. Amen. The beginning, uh, I mean, uh, coming out. Exodus chapter 19. And y'all, y'all bear with me. I'm going to take my time. Amen. Exodus chapter 19. In verses, uh, 
I want to do verses one through six. All right. And Exodus chapter 19 and verses one through six is what we're going to focus on. And the reason why we're here is because God is, is literally establishing his people. Amen. And he's establishing them as a kingdom. And I just want to, you to see how he's establishing them and then parallel that to your own life or to what God has literally done for you. Amen. Because here is actually also the gospel is being preached. Amen. Notice he said in the third month when the children of Israel were gone out of the land of Egypt uh, and the same day came they into the wilderness of Sinai uh, for they departed from Riftim and were come to the desert in, of Sinai and had pinched uh, in the wilderness and there Israel camped before the mount. So we see here God brought them out. Amen. Brought them out of the land of Egypt. Amen. And in certain places, God says, I bore thee on eagle's wings. I brought you out. And notice, and if y'all remember, he killed the firstborn uh, of the Egyptians. And, and that was uh, 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 symbolic to blood being shed for their redemption. And that's symbolic to uh, uh, the Passover, which the blood, they killed that lamb. And when they killed that lamb, that's symbolic to they themselves dying, but they had a substitute, amen? And God says, when I see the blood, I'll do what? Pass over you. So God said in his word that I have redeemed you, amen? I have purchased you uh, with my own blood. And that's like what Christ has done for us. Amen. He purchased us. He redeemed us uh, with his own blood. He is our Passover, right? Hallelujah, my God. Thank you, Lord. He is our peace. Amen. Hallelujah. And when that blood is upon our lives, death shall pass over us. Hallelujah, my God. So, so, so God, uh, that's one parallel to what was going on then, what is going on now with us. All right, what verse I'm in? Verse number three, it says, And Moses went up unto God and called unto him out of the mountain, saying, uh, Thus shalt thou say to the house of Jacob and to the children of Israel, You have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I bear you on eagles' wings and brought you out unto myself. Amen? When God brought you out of the world, amen, he brought you out of the world unto himself. Amen? You belong to God. Hallelujah. And God belongs to you. Amen? Thank you, Lord. And he freed you from the world, not that you can do your own thing, but so that you can serve him. Amen. Uh, that's why it says you've been bought with a price. You are not your own. Amen. Hallelujah. By God, by God. We ought to just give God a praise just for that. Yeah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. My God. So, so notice, he said, I, I brought you unto myself. Uh, the price has been prayed with the precious blood of Jesus when it comes down to us. Uh, verse number five, he says, Now, therefore, if you are what? Obey my voice indeed. In other words, if you will obey my word. Amen? That's why, that's why the Bible is written. The Bible is God's word, God's voice, God's thoughts. Amen? Uh, that's, that's very key. The word of God that is written unto us is God's voice. It's God's thoughts. Amen. It's the will of God. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Now notice what he said. If. That if is a big thing then. Amen. Because a lot of people uh, uh, may not walk with God. Amen. They may not give their lives even though they confess him. Even though they call him Lord. Uh, uh, that's that word if. Uh, if. If is huge. Amen. It's only two letters, but it means something. Amen. Uh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He said, if you will obey my voice indeed, notice, and keep my covenant, uh, notice, then shall ye, then shall ye, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people. Uh, for all the earth is mine. Hallelujah. Then notice verse 6. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. Uh, and, there, and, and these are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. So my point is this. When Jesus said that the kingdom of heaven comes without observation. But he said, it shall be in you. Uh, he's referring to the word of God being in you. Hallelujah. That's what establishes God's kingdom. You have to have his word within you. Amen. His word has to be in you to establish you as a kingdom member of God. Amen. Uh, if you don't have his word, you're not a part of his kingdom. If you're not operating in his word, you're not a part of his kingdom. Amen? Y'all with me? Hallelujah. So you've got to have what? The word of God. You've got to have God's thoughts abiding in you. You've got to have God's will abiding in you. Amen? Hallelujah. You've got to, uh, you've got to uh, uh, have his word in you, in your mind. Amen? And then you've got to obey it. You've got to operate under it. Amen? Not, 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 well, uh, you know what the word of God says. Uh, God tells you to uh, do good to them that hate you and to despite those that despitefully use you. When you're in God's kingdom and you choose him, that is not a choice. Amen? You have to operate that way. Uh, you have to do things God's way. Amen? You have to, hallelujah, he tells you to seek after him. You have to seek after him. Uh, you have to call on his name. Uh, you have to pray. Uh, hallelujah, because that's part of the kingdom. You have to pray. Uh, you have to give. Amen. You have to give tithes and you have to give offerings. Amen. Uh, you have to praise your God. Uh, it's, you're commanded to praise him. You're commanded to worship him. You're commanded to give him thanks. Amen. Why? Because that's a part of the kingdom. Uh, if you don't do it, you'll be a heretic. Uh, if you don't do it, hallelujah, you'll be a rebel. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Hallelujah. So, so you got to praise him. shot. Hallelujah. You've got to seek after him if you're going to do it uh, uh, and be a part of the kingdom of God. Amen? Hallelujah. Now, now I want to establish this. Uh, why God can say what he says because God is sovereign. Amen? That's a good word for us to, to get down in our spirit. What does it mean to be sovereign? When God establishes himself, he said, I'm God all by myself. Hallelujah. There's no other God before me. There's no other God beside me. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And God said, I'll do all of my good pleasure. Hallelujah. Who then can come up against your God? Uh, who is like unto your God? Uh, he's a God of God. Hallelujah. And there's none else beside him. He's sovereign. His will has to stand. Hallelujah. Whatever he says has to come to pass. Hallelujah, my God. That's what sovereign means. Hallelujah. There's, there's, there's no one else to look to. Uh, God doesn't look to no one else. Hallelujah. But himself. God rules himself. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. God is establishing everything himself. Hallelujah. And he's sure. Hallelujah. He's steadfast. Uh, and he's unmovable. Hallelujah. Nothing. Hallelujah. is impossible with your God. Hey, son of a Oh, hey, glory. Y'all that just give him a praise right there. Hallelujah, my God. That's what sovereign means. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. There's no one else above it. There's nobody else beneath it. There's nobody else beside it. Hey, hallelujah. Who is like unto your God? Hey, hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why when Job got beside himself and started asking God this and that, God said, where were you, Job? Uh, hallelujah. When I laid the foundations and hallelujah, and I opened up the heavens like a curtain. Where were you, Job? Hallelujah. Can you control the Leviathan? Where were you, Job? Hallelujah. That's that's God. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. That's why when Moses said, Well, Lord, I'm going down here, but I don't know who to call you and what to say. Uh, God said, just tell him I am. Uh, I am that I am. Hallelujah, because there's no words really to describe it. Hey, son of God, shut. Hallelujah, you can't fit your God in a box. Hey, hallelujah. You can't, my God, my, hey, son of God, my God, when, when God has done something great, he's doing something great. Hallelujah, that's, that's how your God operates. Hallelujah, thank you, Lord, my God. Hey, shut up. Hallelujah. So, so, so that's what God was telling them. Amen. Notice verse number five. He said, now therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed, notice, and keep my covenant. See, that's what, that's what establishes the kingdom within you. Amen. Hallelujah. The word of God and the covenant that he has made with you. Amen. Uh, you got some great and precious promises. Uh, y'all follow me? Thank you, Lord. God, God has, God has, God has demanded and 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 promised that He will uphold you. Amen. Uh, that nothing by any means shall destroy you. Amen. That He will provide for you. Amen. Hallelujah. That's part of the covenant. Amen. Hallelujah. If you were to read, uh, we're not going to go there, but if you were to read Ephesians chapter number one, it'll tell you about those great and precious promises. Amen. That God has made to you. Amen. Um, now, now notice, he ain't making them to you. He's already made them to you. Uh, <laughs> Hallelujah. He's already established them. Uh, he's not establishing them as he goes along. It's already done. Tell your neighbor, it's already done. Yeah, it's already done. Hallelujah, you already the head and not the tail. Hallelujah, you already above and not beneath. Are you already sitting in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. Hallelujah, you already strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And nothing by any means shall destroy you. That's an established will of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. God has already provided for you. Amen. He's already provided for you. Uh, he's already made a way of escape uh, for you. Uh, <laughs> he ain't making a way. He's already made a way. Hallelujah. I know we sing that song and we get excited. When we hear that song, and I get excited too, he's making a way. Hallelujah. But reality is, he's already made a way. Yeah. Hallelujah. When you walk by faith and not by sight, following out the kingdom principles, the way is revealed unto you. Yeah. That kind of shot. And when you walk in that way, you'll see all the provision that you need, all the joy that you need, all the peace that you need, all the healing that you need. All the resources that you need. You just got to stay in the way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Come on and just give me one more praise. I'm going to bother y'all today. Because there's something down on the inside. Hallelujah. That's working. I said it's working. I said it's working on the outside. Hallelujah. The kingdom of heaven within you. Now notice what he said. 
Help me here, Holy Ghost. Notice what he said. Shama. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost said, I am. <laughs> hey, hallelujah. Thank you. All right. By God. By God. By God. Notice what he said. He said, now therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant. Notice what he said. And ye shall be a peculiar what? Treasure. Different. Amen. Hallelujah. God put that Holy Ghost in you. You became peculiar. Yeah. Huh? And that becomes a treasure. Thank you, Lord. Not many wise, not many noble huh, are called. Amen. God has chosen the base things and the foolish things. Yeah. Amen. That's what makes you peculiar. Amen. And that, that word peculiar, thank you, Lord, make, makes it rare. Amen. Right. Hallelujah. You rare. Hallelujah. You are you are a rare gem. Hallelujah, you're a rare stone. Amen. Hallelujah, you're, 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 you're different. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. Lord. Notice God called you a treasure yeah. uh, unto me above what? All people. Yeah. Hallelujah. When you in you don't when you in God's kingdom, uh, you don't get the big head. Uh, to overcome your enemies. Why? 
Because you're in a spiritual fight. Yeah. Uh, you, you, it, to tell you the truth, uh, you're more spiritual than you are natural when you're walking with God. Why? Because in Him we live. Yeah. Uh, in Him we move. Yeah. And in Him we have our being. Amen. And God is a spirit. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Oh my God, I got to move on. Thank you, Jesus. Now notice then. Notice what he says. You're gonna, you shall be unto me a what? Oh, wait. Uh, 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 verse number five. Verse number five. A peculiar treasure unto me above all people. Because he said, for what? For all the earth belongs to God. Amen. All the earth is mine. Now notice. Verse number six. He says, and ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests. Now notice, that kingdom of priests represents that, that you uh, uh, should offer your God praise, huh? worship, amen, and what? Sacrifices, amen? Hallelujah, that's imperative. If you're going to walk with God, you've got to be able to praise him, amen? You've got to be able to worship him. Uh, because God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Yeah. Amen? And you have to be able to offer God sacrifices. Uh, sacrifices of, of, of fasting, sacrifices of prayer, and, and monetary sacrifices. Sacrifices of good deeds. And, uh, my God. And, and those sacrifices have to cost you something. Amen. It's not a sacrifice if it doesn't cost you something. Hallelujah. Uh, you getting up uh, uh, praying at 8 o'clock in the morning as opposed to 6 o'clock in the morning. Hallelujah. Won't benefit you as much if you got up at that 6 o'clock hour because you are sacrificing. Uh, hallelujah. It's something unto the Lord. You follow me? Hallelujah. It's got to cost you something. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And notice. He said, I want you to be a kingdom of priests. Amen? Thank you, Lord. That's why he said, present your body as a what? A living what? Sacrifice. Amen? Because why? You're a kingdom of priests. Amen? Hallelujah. So you have to praise him. You have to worship him. Amen? You have to offer him sacrifices. Amen? Hallelujah, because your God is holy. Amen. And God established that principle way back in the book of Genesis where he dealt with Cain and Abel. Amen. And y'all know the story. Cain uh, didn't give God what he required. Amen. Abel did and was accepted. Amen. So therefore, what God is saying is you just can't offer him anything. Uh, you've got to give him what he requires. Yeah. Amen. And you've got to know what your God requires in order to give him what he requires. Amen. Y'all yeah. with me? Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. My God. My God. Woo it just got hot up in here. Hallelujah. Yeah. Give God what he requires. Yeah. Huh? Notice, he said you'll be a kingdom of priests. Uh, a kingdom of priests and a what kind of nation? A holy nation. When you see the word nation, think of kingdom. Amen? A holy kingdom. Amen? Holy means without sin. Living a holy lifestyle. Amen? Without sin. That's what holy means. Without sin. God wants you to live your life without sinning. Amen? Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scorner. For no, his delight is where? In the law of God, and in his law do you what? Meditate. If you do not sin, you got to meditate in God's word day and night. Amen? Hallelujah. Now, I'm going to say this, and this is true, because I know it for myself. Amen. Uh, when you when you get into the Word of God, uh, you're listening to your spiritual tapes and you're praying and seeking after God. You 
are clean. You feel different. You feel holy. Amen? If you were to, I don't advise anybody to do this. If you stop reading for a week, huh, and stop praying for a week, you're going to get weak and weak and weak and feel all dirty and nasty. Amen? And, and all kind of sinful things will come upon you and you'll think all kind of crazy stuff in your mind. Amen? And, and then when you turn yourself back to God and really get back into his word, get back into worship, get back into reading, you'll feel a difference. You'll feel holy. You'll feel righteous. You'll feel clean. All of me, why? Because there's a difference. Amen? I want y'all to know that. There's a difference. Yes, there's a difference between darkness and light. Uh, there's a difference between the power of Satan and the power of God. There's a difference. Hallelujah. And God, God wants you to walk in his difference. Hey, God wants you to feel his difference. God wants you to manifest. Hallelujah. His difference. Hallelujah. Why? Because you're the salt of the earth. Hallelujah. And if you lose your anointing, if you lose your power, uh, if you lose the glory, hallelujah, you'll be worthless. Hallelujah. Because you are to reflect God's glory. You ought to reflect God's power. Uh, you ought to reflect God's anointing. Hallelujah. By God. Y'all feel me today? Hallelujah. In every circumstance, you ought to be reflecting the glory of God. Hallelujah. My God. Hallelujah. Why? Because you're holy. Amen. Uh, you reflect his nature. Uh, you reflect his character. Amen. You walk in his culture. You live by his culture. Amen. Hallelujah. My God. And you operate under his principles. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, let, let us move on. Thank you, Jesus. Now, notice. Was that in the end of verse 6? All right. Now, notice. Uh, that last part of verse 6, it says this. And these are the words which uh, thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. Now, I want you to get this out of that, then we're going to move on. That what was establishing them as a kingdom was uh, uh, God's words. Amen? God's commandments. You follow me? And if they obeyed God's words and they obeyed God's commandments, they would be a part of his kingdom. Y'all with me? I want you to that's very imperative. Amen? If you were to think back over this nation... <laughs> Amen. When this nation was establishing themselves as a nation, uh, one of the first things that they did was wrote the Constitution. Amen. Uh, and that Constitution, when it was ratified, it established the United States as a nation. Amen. Y'all with me? Thank you, Lord. The problem with it was uh, that we had was, was we were uh, uh, the people of color excluded from it. Huh? We were excluded from that constitution. Huh? Y'all hey, with me? Hey, I'm, I'm teaching history. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Jesus. We were excluded. That's why we had. That's why we have so much trouble. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Uh, and that's why they try to uh, recorrect their trouble uh, uh, about adding amendments mm -hmm. uh, uh, to the Constitution, the Bill of Rights. Uh, equal rights. You follow me? Because they, the, the original forefathers excluded us. Mm -hmm. Amen? Hallelujah. And, 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 and with God, God, God's rule never changes. God's laws never change because they're established forever. Amen? Y'all with me? Hallelujah. And, and the, beauty, the beauty of that is, thank you, Lord, is, is if you look at the story of, of Ruth and Naomi. Amen. Let us go there real quick. Hallelujah. My God. This may be a 10 series Bible study. <laughs> uh, Ruth and Naomi. Thank you, Jesus. Let's go to chapter number one. We have to say amen. Thank you, Lord. Ruth and Naomi. 
As y'all know the story that Naomi uh, had, had a husband and had two sons, and the two sons uh, married these Moabite women, and as they because they left Judah, uh, and uh, the husband died, the two sons died. Amen. And now Ruth, uh, no, now Naomi uh, is telling the two daughters-in-laws to go back, go back to your own people. Amen. Go back to your own people. All right. Drop in down to verse 14. Ruth chapter 1 verse 14. Notice what he says. And they lifted up their voice and they wept again. And Ophrah kissed her mother-in-law. But Ruth clave unto her. Ruth was a Moabite. Amen. She was not part of the children of Israel. Right? Alright. Now no. And she said, Behold, this is Naomi talking. Behold, thy sister-in-law is going back unto her people, unto her gods. Return thou, uh, return thou thy sister-in-law. Now notice what Ruth says. This is why we're here. Verse 16. And Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave nor to return from following after thee, for whether thou goest, what? I will go. And whether thou lodgest, I will lodge. Now here's the kicker. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God shall what? Be my God. Where thou diest, I will die, and where thou art buried, the Lord do so to me, and more also, if up, uh, but death part uh, thee from me. All right? Notice, verse 18. When she saw that she was steadfastly minded to go with her, uh, she stopped speaking to her, telling her to leave. But notice, she had to renounce uh, her God and choose the true and living God. Uh, when that's that's the entry into God's kingdom. Mm -hmm. Amen. All strangers will welcome into the kingdom of God if they chose to follow after his laws. If they chose to follow after his ways. Doesn't that sound like salvation? You receive the Holy Ghost once you surrender and submit and say, Lord, I want you to be my God. Uh, I'm going to walk after your ways. Uh, and, and, and I'm going to do it until death do us part. Uh, hallelujah. That translates you into the kingdom. Amen. Hallelujah. I say teach Pastor Queen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Uh, you got to have that uh, root type of spirit. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And that's, and that's, and that's what uh, 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 God does for us. Amen. Mm -hmm. Now, let's move on. Thank you. Y'all want me to move on? Yeah. Okay, let's move on. Now, we talked then about what establishes a kingdom. Amen. It comes without observation. Right? And, and, and it is established in you through the word of God and through his spirit. Amen? Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. And, and if you obey, you'll be a part of the kingdom. Uh, if you don't obey, you won't be a part of the kingdom. Amen? Uh, uh, Jesus told Nicodemus, you've got to be born again of the water and of the spirit. Your mind has to be renewed. Amen? Your thoughts have to be renewed. Your behavior has to be renewed. Amen? Now, part of the kingdom of God, then, when I say kingdom of God, uh, I'm using that now as a specific term, as uh, uh, you've got to understand God's character. Amen? We're going to take the next 20 minutes and talk about the character of God. 
Y'all with me? Yeah. All right. Amen. Now, turn with me then uh, to the book of uh, Exodus. To the book of Exodus, chapter 34. Got to understand why your God is holy. Amen? And the reason why, thank you, Holy Ghost, we've got to understand God's character is because we were made in the image and in the likeness of God. We ought to reflect the character of God. And when I say we ought to, that, that word ain't strong enough. We must uh, reflect the character of God. Amen? We have to. Because we are created in his image and his likeness. And that's all that's that's God's purpose. Uh, he purposed that in you through Christ Jesus. Follow me? God purposed that in you through Christ Jesus. We can also say God purposed it in Christ, in you. Through him. Amen. Uh, let me, that's why Jesus said, Notice, I'm going to operate. If my word abide in you, uh, I abide in you, you can do it. Ask what you will, and it will. Shall be. Not maybe, it shall be. Uh, let me, why? Because there will be no division, there will be no separation. Uh, you'll ask according to God's will. His purpose. Amen? Y'all with me? You won't ask according to your purpose. <laughs> you won't ask according to your will. Why? Because you've already surrendered your will to the will of God. Amen? Hallelujah. Now, let's look here then. Exodus uh, chapter 19. Oh, uh, no, I said 34. I'm sorry. Exodus chapter 34. And I want to uh, go to verse number five. Did I tell you all that already? All right, Exodus 34 and verse five. This is Moses. Moses was dealing with the Lord and the Lord was dealing with him. <laughs> so it says, and the Lord, verse five, and the Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him and there notice. Proclaim the name of the Lord. Amen. And anytime you see proclaim the name of the Lord, it talks about God was establishing or proclaiming his character. Amen. Your name carries with it a character. Amen. It, 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 it has with it how you ought to act. What you are supposed to do. Amen. I wish I had this kind of knowledge and wisdom before, before I was naming my children. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Uh, people, you know, you heard that, but I didn't receive that. Amen. But I, if I had to go back and do it again, I receive it this time. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Uh, that's why he told Mary, didn't leave it up to her. Didn't leave it up to Joseph. They said, you shall have a son, and thou shalt call his name what? Jesus. Why? Because his character. He shall what? Save his people from what? Their sins. Amen? And he said, the scripture says, unto us a, chi a, a, a child is born. Huh? Unto us a what? A son is given. And his name shall be called what? Wonderful. Yep, they said that too. They shall be called Emmanuel. Uh, that's in the further chapter. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Which means God with us. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Then he said, his name shall be called Wonderful. Uh, Counselor. Uh, Mighty God. Prince of Peace. Everlasting Father. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Lord. And that, those names represent the character of Jesus. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Lord. And if he has that character, we ought to have that character too. We should be wonderful. <laughs> Hallelujah. We should be peaceful folk, shouldn't we? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Now, notice I ain't put all them attachments to us. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Uh, don't go around calling me the mighty God. <laughs> Hallelujah. I had to go and get my head knocked off. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. But, but you understand what I'm saying? We should have these characteristics within us. Amen? Jacob was given the name Jacob, which means trickster. Amen? Was it? Uh, uh, supplanter. Thank you, Lord. And he did that, didn't he? Uh, tricked Esau out of his stuff. Tricked his father-in-law out of his stuff. Amen? But when God got ready to use him, he changed his name. Uh, hallelujah. God made him a prince. Hallelujah. Why? Wow. Because he was going to have them 12 children. Uh, and out, out of the 12 children, he was going to have one called Judah. Uh, hallelujah. Which out of Judah, uh, which means perfect praise. Yeah. Hallelujah. Shall have to say. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. There's something in the name. Uh, that's why God said, I'm going to proclaim uh, my name. In other words, he said, I'm going to uh, make my character known. Amen? Because uh, God is a mystery. God has to reveal himself. Amen? So notice what he said. Hallelujah. What verse we in? Yeah, verse 35. Okay. And the Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord. Notice. Uh, and the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed the name of the Lord, the Lord God. That's the first thing God said. He said, I'm the Lord God. Huh? Thank you, Lord. Meaning that I am the ultimate ruler. Huh? I'm the ruler who rules over others. Amen? Hallelujah. I'm Jehovah. I'm, which means I'm self-sufficient. When God's battery runs down, if you, Lord, don't strike me here, but if his battery runs down, he don't go plug himself in. Because huh? he never runs down. Hallelujah. Huh? Thank you, Lord. He never stops existing. Amen? Thank you, Lord. In the beginning, God, God was there before the beginning. Amen? <laughs> no, he said, the Lord God, now notice, he's merciful uh, and gracious. If you're going to operate in God's kingdom, you have to be merciful. You have to be gracious. Am I right? You have to be long-suffering. Because God you have to be abundant in goodness. Am I right? You have, and he's abundant in goodness and truth. You got to be abundant in goodness and truth. Amen? Just like God. Have his characteristics. This is a part of the kingdom characteristics. Amen? Hallelujah. People ought to know you by the love that you show. Uh, people ought to identify us by the love we show one to another. Uh, by our long suffering. Amen? Because we're gracious. Am I right? Um, I open doors for people. Uh, I, I wait on people. <laughs> you follow me? Uh, that's what gracious means. Amen? Uh, I, rather, I prefer you than myself. Uh, gracious. You follow me? Thank you, Lord. I like it when the Bible Peak teachers say, if they tell you there was a million dollars in the back, who'd be the first? Would you prefer your brother or your sister? Or would you uh, uh, run them over? <laughs> uh, and you know, I'll fix it up in my mind real quick. I'll run them over, then I'll give them some. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. But, but you got to be gracious. Uh, abundant in the goodness and truth. Notice, this is your God. Keeping mercy for thousands. Amen. Isn't that part of God's characteristic? Isn't that 
What he wants us to do? Be merciful. Uh, blessed are the merciful, so they, for they shall obtain what? Mercy. And God says, I'm merciful to thousands. We ought to be merciful to thousands. Amen? Just show mercy everywhere. Amen? Hallelujah. Bible. If we had that mindset, uh, if we had that mindset, uh, just to be merciful. Hallelujah. My God. Uh, my God, you'll see something. To show mercy. Now your first, your first reaction is to show mercy. Uh, your first reaction is to show that mercy. Uh, not to choke them out, uh, not to expose them, but to show mercy. Uh, that's part of the ingredients to salvation. Uh, uh, you're saved by grace, uh, that through faith in Jesus Christ. And and God, God, uh, Paul writes, uh, uh, grace. Uh, mercy and peace be unto you through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Those are the ingredients of salvation. Amen. Hallelujah. Grace, mercy, and peace. Amen. Hallelujah. In other words, uh, 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 for God to save you, He first has to have grace. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. And uh, uh, that grace helps Him to have mercy. Amen? And that mercy leads to peace. Hallelujah. Y'all with me? All right. Let's look on. Notice, this is your God. Keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity. That has to be a part of us. We got to forgive iniquity. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us of our trespasses. As we forgive those that trespass against us. Forgive us of our iniquities. As we forgive those that have sinned against us. Amen. Notice that. Notice. Uh, uh, forgiving iniquity and trespasses and what? Sin. He breaking it out. <laughs> Iniquity is gross sin. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And trust, trust transgression is those that 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 step over the will of God. And then he said sin. And that word sin there means it, it has a connotation to 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 one uh, 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 who is habitual in their behavior. Sinners. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Can't but help it. When I, when I, before I got saved, I didn't realize it until after I got saved. And I was with one of my cousins at a funeral. And he said to me, Frankie, I love to lie. And that, that thing hit me. I'm like, man, I do too. I, at that time when I was alive, loved it. Huh? Thank you, Lord. Love, love, love it. And I, I used to lie so much that I lied to lie to lie. Uh, love it. Thank you. You follow? That, that's what he's talking about. Uh, stuff that's in you that you love to do. Thank you, Jesus. Get that out of you. I can get that out of me. Amen. And that was one of my fights. I ain't trying to, I, Lord, help me not to get off track. But that was one of my fights when I got into the church. Lied so much, every time I misquoted uh, or misstated something, here come the condemnation. Uh, the devil whooping my tail. Uh, oh, you didn't lie. So I had to get the definition of what a lie meant. Uh, something that's told with intent to deceive. Once that was revealed to me, I had victory. Amen? Hallelujah. The devil will fight you with your love. Amen? Hallelujah. My God. My God. Who am I talking to here today? Oh, yeah. uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And you got to love righteousness and hate evil. Now notice that. Here we go. God's characteristic. Thank you, Lord. And that he will uh, by This is God now. This is God, him. This is God, this next verse. Uh, 
It's not us. Because God is the judge, right? And he says, that, and that will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children until the third and fourth generation. Now, that, that scripture would bother some people. But when you understand God, and God is just, amen, and, and, and God's first response is to show mercy. God's first response is to be long-suffering. Amen? But there's got to come a time of judgment. Am I right? We've got to understand a part of God's character is judgment. Amen? And God reveals that to us to straighten us out. Amen? All liars are going to have their part in the lake. That's there to straighten you up. Amen? So God, God will show you mercy. God will be long-suffering. God, God will try to help you. But when you've exhausted everything that God is trying to do for you, then you face the judgment of God. And God wants you to know that. That's part of his character. Amen? So you don't play God. All things are open and naked before you. Amen? And I feel this mouth glass shifting now. I feel a hammer coming down. <laughs> but that's it. Amen? God is not always sugar pops and plum drops. Amen? There's, a, there's, a, there's another side of God. Uh, the Bible said God is love, but he's also a what? A consuming fire. Amen? That's why we are encouraged to send our sins ahead of us. Because you don't want them to follow you in judgment. That's why the Bible says, if, and, and, and we'll teach this on next week, that that's why you've got to realize that right now you're sitting in the seat of judgment. Amen? Hallelujah. So that when you hear this word, you can repent. Huh? You can turn. Hallelujah. And get it right. Hallelujah. Y'all with me? Thank you, Lord. It's better to get it right right now huh? than, than, than not to get it right and to hear him say, depart from me. You work of iniquity. I never knew. Amen. Notice that. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Y'all getting something out of this? Amen. Now notice Alright? Uh, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity, transgression, and sin, and that by no means will he clear the guilty, visiting iniquity of the fathers upon the children, upon the children's children, unto the third and fourth generation. Now God, uh, uh, God, God said in, I believe it's either Ezekiel, or I think it's Ezekiel, that, uh, God said that uh, every, literally, every tub is going to sit on his own bottom. Amen. There's some generational stuff, uh, curses that goes along. Amen. But in Christ Jesus, all curses are broke. Uh, if you're in Jesus, you don't operate under curses. Amen. Because there's no curse in you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. But, but because of that Adamic nature, Huh? Those, those proclivities that people have get passed down. Amen? Thank you, Lord. I'm using big words for a big reason. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Y'all follow me? All uh, the stuff get passed down. That's why sometimes you may uh, see me act and walk like my dad. Amen? <laughs> Thank you, Lord. My wife always talks to me about that. That's why she laughs. Thank you, Lord. Sometimes uh, 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 I see y'all, and I see y'all people. I say, oh, I know where y'all, y'all kinfolk are. Amen? Stuff been passed down in you. Amen? All right. Now, let's, let's go over then uh, to the book of uh, 1 Corinthians. I'm sorry. 1 Chronicles. Then we got to close out on this. I ain't done we got to close out. First Chronicles, 
chapter 29, we're talking about the character of God. Lord have mercy. Man, I wish y'all could give me five more hours. <laughs> See, that's a good way. To she said, I know. That's how we should say. All right. First, First Chronicles chapter 29. Chapter 29. If you haven't saved me, we're going to end up on this. Thank you, Lord. First Chronicles chapter 29, and we're going to start out with verse number 10. This is David blessing the Lord because uh, God is allowing him to get together all the material needed to build God a house. And there was such a great and overwhelming response. Uh, David got beside himself in rejoicing in the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So, uh, 29 and 10. He says, Wherefore David blessed the Lord before all the congregation. And David said, Bless be thou, Lord God of Israel, our Father forever and ever. Verse number 11. Thine, O God, is the greatness. Notice, he's describing God as what? Greatness. And power and glory and victory and majesty for all that is in heaven and in earth is thine. Notice, thy kingdom, O Lord, and Thou art exalted, notice, above all. That's where Matthew, in the book of Matthew, got thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Uh, he's literally quoting out of this verse. <laughs> Thank you. That stuff excites me. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Now notice, he's, he's, he's saying, God, you alone have the victory. Amen. You alone have majesty. Huh? Uh, God is royal. God is holy. He's majestic. Amen? Notice, he says, Thy kingdom, O Lord, uh, and thou art exalted, uh, lifted up, uh, uh, as, as head above all. Amen? Uh, notice, verse number 12. This gets good to us. <laughs> Both riches and honor come of thee. Uh, I, we love to depend on this world system. Uh, we just depend on God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all of these other things shall be what? Added unto thee. Hallelujah. So, so you know where your wealth will come from. Hallelujah. Uh, and I'm teaching this for a reason. Hallelujah. I want y'all to be wealthy. <laughs> Hallelujah. Not, not only in righteousness, but in, but, but, but in monetary stuff so y'all can do kingdom business. Do kingdom work. Amen? Hallelujah. Now notice, both riches and honor come of thee. Thou reignest, what? Over all. That word reign means what? Rule. Amen? God rules over all. Amen? And if that's our characteristic, we ought to uh, uh, know how to, first of all, possess our vessels in sanctification and honor and rule over our assignments. Amen? Uh, uh, before Adam fell, he was ruling in the garden. Amen? He dominated over his assignment. Am I right? Uh, but then he was, uh, well, now he wasn't deceived, but Eve was deceived, and he chose to be with Eve. Amen? Which was the plan of God. Amen? Hallelujah. So, but my point is, you got whatever God has given you, dominate over it. Rule over it. Huh? If, 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 if you be faithful in a few things, he'll make you what? Ruler of the many. Amen? Hallelujah. And if you don't want to rule, pray for a man to work. <laughs> Man, that was how about the griddle. <laughs> but I thought it did. Hallelujah. Uh, 
both riches and honor come of thee. Thou reignest over all, and in thine hand is what? Power and might, and in thine hand is to make what? Great God. God can make you great. Amen. God can take whatever he has and make it great. Amen. Hallelujah. Sister Jackie, I'm looking at you. I'm looking at somebody great. Hallelujah. My God. And, and to give strength unto who? Everybody. Give strength unto all. Uh, uh, that's why I said be strong in the Lord. Uh, be strong in the Lord. Uh, and in the power of what? His might. Ah, hallelujah. Strength comes from God. Uh, let the weak say they strong. Amen. My grace is sufficient. Uh, my, my strength is made perfect in your weakness. Uh, that's why Paul said, Therefore, most I will give glory in my infirmity, in my weakness. Amen. Hallelujah. Notice what he said. I'm almost done for tonight. He says, Now, therefore, our God, we what? We thank you. Amen. We're commanded.